Good morning and welcome to our Sunday worship on this, the third Sunday of Easter. Once again, a number of folks have prepared, contributed to and enabled our online worship. And we're grateful to Callum for leading the talk to the young folks, to Daphne for reading, to Lynn for selecting and playing the music, and to Ewan for bringing it all together and presenting it online. Today, as we continue our focus on the appearances of Jesus following his resurrection, we turn to an account that only is told in Luke's Gospel, an account of two followers walking along the road to a village called Emmaus on the first Easter Sunday later in the day. They are sad. They're full of sorrow and they fail to recognise the stranger who draws alongside them and walks with them. Only when they reach the place to which they are going and they settle to eat, and the stranger breaks bread, do they recognise who it is and realise that it is Jesus. May our eyes be open today to see Jesus as we worship him together, And so we begin by singing together to his praise and glory. Let us worship God.
Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is merciful. Let us pray. We adore you, Lord of all. You reveal yourself in the beauty of the world around us. You speak to us through scripture. Your Son makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. May we have our eyes opened this day to discern Jesus in our midst as we gather as one in the Spirit, even though we are distant from each other, to know him and to recognise him as we listen to his word. God of mercy, you sent Jesus to seek the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We confess to you our selfishness and our lack of love. We confess to you our fear and our reluctance to share our faith. We confess to you our stubbornness and our lack of trust. Hear our confession of these and all our sins. If we confess our sins, the one who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace. God of life and love, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And hear us as we further pray in the words of Jesus, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Good morning everybody, I hope you are all doing well and that you are keeping safe out there. And good morning to our Pathfinders. Um, I see you have been having fun with the weekly challenges so far. Um, and hopefully some of you got to try out Tom's craft from last week. The one with the hands um, and the love hearts in them. There will be some more challenges on the website this week. So keep an eye out for some more fun activities to have a go at. Last week, you may remember Tom told us the story of what the disciples did after they learned the news that Jesus had risen again. This week, I'll be telling you another story, this time about when Jesus met two of his followers on the road to a town named Emmaus. And for the adults who are following along, I'll be reading Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a town named Emmaus. It is about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself came near and began walking with them. They were not allowed to recognise Jesus. Then he said, What are these things you are talking about while you walk? The two followers stopped. Their faces were very sad. The one named Cleopas answered, You must be the only one in Jerusalem who does not know what just happened there. Jesus said to them, What are you talking about? The followers said, It is about Jesus of Nazareth. He was a prophet from God to all the people. He said and did many powerful things. Our leaders and the leading priests gave him up to be judged and killed. They nailed him to a cross. But we were hoping that he would free the Jews. It is now the third day since this happened. And today some women among us told us some amazing things. Early this morning they went to the tomb, but they did not find his body there. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels. The angels said that Jesus was alive. So some of our group went to the tomb too. They found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, You are foolish and slow to realise what is true. You should believe everything the prophets said. 
They said that Christ must suffer these things before he enters his glory. Then Jesus began to explain everything that had been written about himself in the scriptures. He started with Moses and then talked about what all the prophets had said about him. They came near the town of Emmaus, and Jesus acted as if he did not plan to stop there. But they begged him, Stay with us, it is late, it is almost night. So he went in to stay with them. Jesus sat down with them and took some bread. He gave thanks for the food and divided it. Then he gave it to them. And then they were allowed to recognise Jesus. But when they saw who he was, he disappeared. They said to each other, when Jesus talked to us on the road, it felt like a fire burning in us. It was exciting when he explained the true meaning of the scriptures. So the two followers got up at once and went back to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven apostles and others gathered. They were saying, the Lord really has risen from death. He showed himself to Simon. Then the two followers told what had happened on the road. They talked about how they recognised Jesus when he divided the bread. And that's our story for this week. Put your right hand in, you put your right hand out. Put your right hand in and you shake it all about. You gave your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Put your left hand in, you put your left hand out Put your left hand in and you shake it all about You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around That's what it's all about Give your heart to Jesus Give your heart to Jesus Give your heart to Jesus And that's what it's all about Put your right foot in, you put your right foot out You put your right foot in and you shake it all about You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around That's what it's all about You put your left foot in, your left foot out You put your left foot in and you shake it all about You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around That's what it's all about Give your heart to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus. And that's what it's all about. You put your head in, you put your head out. You put your head in and you shake it all about. You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your whole self in. You put your whole self out You put your whole self in And you shake it all about You give your heart to Jesus And you turn yourself around That's what it's all about Give your heart to Jesus Give your heart to Jesus Give your heart to Jesus, heart to Jesus. And that's what it's all about your heart to Jesus, give your heart to Jesus, give your heart to Jesus, and that's what it's all about, yeah! The reading is taken from the book of Luke, Luke chapter 24, we read from verse 13 to 35, the passage headed, the walk to Emmaus. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas 
answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since this happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish men, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He appeared to be going further. But they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished out of their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven gathered together and those who were with them, who said, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. For these readings from God's holy word, thanks be to God. Late on the day of resurrection, two Jesus followers are heading to the village of Emmaus, about seven miles away from Jerusalem. It had been an overwhelming week. From Jesus' triumphal entry into the city just a week before, followed by his betrayal, his arrest, and then culminating in his crucifixion and burial, it would have been gruelling and draining for them. And all of that was enough for them to try to accommodate and accept and deal with. And then it becomes even more complicated. For that morning, there had been strange news of an empty tomb. And an angelic message that Jesus was alive. And so the two on the road walked and talked with a mixture of sadness, grief and confusion. And then Luke tells us Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognising him. We can perhaps see ourselves in this story 
not least at this particular time. We, along with everyone in our nation and indeed throughout the world, find ourselves in a situation where we have more questions than we'd have answers. Or it may even be that we're not terribly sure what the questions are that we should be asking. As the battle with this coronavirus continues, as certainties are few and the future unclear, very little seems to make sense. And what we do understand only seems to cause more confusion. And it's not just in this particular crisis that we can identify with the two on the road to Emmaus. For we too may feel that we have walked miles and talked for hours with others on our own personal roads to Emmaus, trying to wrestle with some sense of order out of the seeming chaos of our lives. Whatever our situation, many of us, of us will be able to understand these two disciples in today's reading. And here is the great truth of this story. When we have been there as they were there on that dark road of sadness and difficulty and confusion, as we presently walk along that road in the current crisis, Jesus has been there with us. Jesus is here with us. It's just that we may not recognise him for the moment. On that road from Jerusalem on that first Easter day, as the two trudged their sad and confused and grief-stricken way to Emmaus, Jesus was there. But they neither realised nor recognised that fact. He was with them. He walked beside them. He talked with them. The risen Jesus was with them. Jesus' presence and provision wasn't dependent on them recognising it. Whether they recognise it or not, he was with them. And just so, Jesus is with each one of us. We may not always recognise his presence, but he's still with us. We may not understand all that's going on in our lives or in our world at this time, but he is still with us. We may not have everything that we want or think we need, but he is still with us, providing what he knows we really need. And then, when the risen Jesus finally revealed himself to his followers, it was in the breaking of the bread. Jesus doesn't promise us answers. He doesn't promise us solutions just when we want them. Instead, what we are offered by Jesus is a much more blessed and precious gift. His presence itself. His presence with us, most clearly revealed in the breaking of bread, most clearly felt and keenly felt as we hear him speak to us through scripture, but sometimes just a glimpse of light in the otherwise dark road, sometimes just the whisper, a hint of his presence when otherwise it seems bleak. Jesus, always with us on the road, with us in the darkness and the difficulty and the doubt, with us in the sadness and the sorrow and the suffering, with us in the cynicism, the conflict, the confusion, with us in the social isolation, the sense of loneliness or in sickness, with us in the grind and the grief and the guilt, 
with us in this time of challenge and crisis and concern for our society, with all of us and with each of us. Jesus, our risen Lord, whoever we are, whatever our circumstances, however we are coping, no matter what we have done or failed to do, regardless of our level of faith or doubt, the risen Christ is with us. He is with us always. He walks with us on every road. He is with us at the heights of joy and celebration and he is with us in the pits of terror and despair. His spirit is the very air that we breathe. His presence, the glue that holds the cosmos together. There is absolutely nowhere you can go, nothing you can do without being in the living presence of the risen Christ. And maybe that's the problem. That which is always and everywhere present quickly slips from our awareness, just becomes taken for granted there in the background. Something to ignore as we live out our lives. And so, though the risen Christ walks with us on the road, we may fail to recognise him. Although the risen Christ speaks to us in the scriptures, we may fail to hear him. Though the risen Christ sits with us at the table where the bread is broken, we may fail to discern him. Nonetheless, he is there. He is here. He is with us. He is present whether we realise it or recognise it or not. He was with these two on the road of their grief and confusion that they didn't realise it or recognise it, not to begin with. Just as surely he's with us on the road, with us on this road, Whatever we may be feeling or facing, whatever our doubts or difficulties, however we may have fared or failed, the risen Jesus is with us. He has been with us all along. It's just that perhaps we didn't realise it nor recognise him. But when we find that the eyes of faith are opened and we realise it is him, and recognise his presence, we will find ourselves truly and deeply transformed. Sadness to joy, doubt to faith, confusion to conviction. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him. May our eyes too be opened and may we recognise him with us on the road. Amen. We now bring to God our prayers of thanks, our prayers for the church, for the world and for those in need. Let us pray. We give you all thanks and praise, O God, for through Christ we have come to trust in you and have set our faith and hope on you. You sent Jesus to us, and though he was condemned to death and crucified, you raised him from the dead, and now he is with us always, and in the breaking of bread and in your living and enduring word, our eyes are opened to see him in you, and our hearts are set on fire by his presence. God of the journey, like these two disciples on that road that first Easter day, we can sometimes get despondent. In these days of social isolation and lockdown, we are aware that there are many in our community who feel weary and worn out, confused and concerned. Walk with us and walk with them, Lord. Listen to our story and then let us listen to you and in hearing you find hope reborn within us. Be close to those in our congregation 
our community and our circle of family and friends who are lonely and isolated, who are ill or anxious, who face financial or employment concerns, who struggle to cope with relationships or with themselves, who are worried about a dear one or have lost a loved one. Walk with them, Lord Jesus. God of the open door, you accepted the hospitality of strangers who urged you to stay with them at the end of the journey. May we be ready to care for the stranger and provide for those who need fed. We pray your blessing on those of our congregation who reach out to those in need through the Food Bank and Club 170, especially at this time. And we pray too for your guidance and blessing and plans being developed with our friends in the well to seek to provide for families in need within our parish. And as we reach out a hand of welcome, may we find that unawares we have welcomed you. God of the broken bread, in this time when we are not able to gather together, not able to come to your table, not able to share in the sacrament of your death and resurrection, not able to worship in each other's company, and not able to share in normal fellowship. May we nevertheless recognise you with us, realise that you are among us, and receive the blessing you give us. God of the Emmaus Road, hear and receive these our prayers in the name of our risen and ascended Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we finish this morning, can I ask you to join with me in wishing Nancy Griffiths a very happy birthday on her 90th.
Go now in the peace, power and presence of the risen Christ with your eyes open to see him and your hearts burning within you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen.